The RV Show USA is brought to you by Flagstaff, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. So here we go, rolling into another hour of great information and terrific guests on the most listened to, most talked about show on radio and social media about the RV lifestyle. Welcome, everybody. Alan Warren here, the RV Wingman. I'm going to say just uh, right up front, I'm going to be giving out our phone number in a few minutes. It seems there's uh, quite a few folks who have got an opinion or an experience that they want to share. We love hearing from you. So you may want to be ready to write down our phone number. Again, I'll be giving it to you here in just a couple of minutes. All right, you may remember I told you about a person who wrote to me recently was very upset about the camper they purchased from Camping World. Uh, as he said, he said it was junk, basically. The short story, this guy buys a used travel trailer from Camping World in quote-unquote as-is condition. It's an $18,000 trailer that he ended up getting rolled up, and with all the extras Camping World included, his $18,000 as-is used camper is now $33,000. It was his first camper, and it was an uh, as-is camper, as I said. He didn't get an inspection. He paid nearly double the actual value when he left the dealership. Now, while I can't stand how uh, Camping World and some of the other mega dealers will take advantage of especially the first-time RV buyer, the buyer has got to accept some responsibility of their decision, either good or bad. The paradox, I guess, is that customers say that they want the lowest price on an RV, and then they'll accept like a almost an 80% increase in additional charges with paint protection, fabric protection, extended warranties, everything, roadside assistance, and I don't get it. Consumers have got to be more willing to accept responsibility for their purchase decisions, even if it's a bad one. I also asked listeners um, if they thought that I was too harsh on the person who paid $33,000 for their $18,000 camper. And here's a sample of what several of the calls sounded like. Hello, my name is Steve from Michigan. I just listened to your recent podcast about um, if you're being too harsh or not being harsh enough on people buying RVs. And I believe you, uh, you're hitting it right on the head. Um, I am new to RVing. My family's new to RVing. Uh, we started RVing about three years ago. And like you said, uh, I did about a year of research before purchasing our uh, RV. It actually uh, just about drove my wife crazy because she's wondering why I was doing so much research um, and then once she found out how intricate everything was and how things were built and uh, what components were put in and how I was comparing one to the other on uh, making an educated decision on which one to buy, she completely understood and then uh, jumped on board. Um, exactly what you said, I do not think you're being harsh at all. You have to do your homework. You have to research what's in these RVs and how they're built and what they're used to be built. And uh, your most recent podcast with purchasing an RV for $18,000, but they found that they're paying thirty three. dollars Again, uh, you, you have to figure out what's going on. You know, what, what bank did you go through? Did you go through your bank? What was the interest rate? What were the terms? Uh, none of that should surprise you. You should know exactly uh, what you're signing for as far as terms and payments and what the uh, overall price of the RV is going to be. Um, I have heard that you said uh, a lot of um, negative publicity about Camping World and how they treat their customers. Um, we do live in Michigan. We're uh, in the Metro Detroit area, and General RV actually has their headquarters located here. Well, I worked with one RV salesman for approximately a year and a half just going in and looking at models and walking through, and I, I think I drove him crazy too. But at the end, he understood, uh, I think, why we were doing the research and making sure that we were buying an RV that suited us and had what we wanted in it. So I know there's uh, every now and then some negative publicity about General RV. If I had to do it all over again, I would purchase uh, from General RV right here in Wixom, Michigan. I appreciate your show. Thank you for everything you put on. I look forward to uh, your podcast every uh, week and uh, listen to them when I uh, drive into work in the morning. You know, this is a great example of a caller who has done their homework. While they bought from General RV, and General is a giant retailer, and you know how I feel about buying from giant retailers, because this guy did his homework, he was prepared. When, uh, when he was ready to pull the trigger, no dealer was going to pull the wool over his eyes 
And that is so important, I think, to understand. You know, that said, while this caller thought I played it right down the middle, a few were not so supportive. They said, uh, hey, man, there ought to be uh, some consumer protection laws out there to prevent somebody from being taken advantage of. Well, guess what? There are consumer protection laws, lots of them. But uh, to believe that you have no responsibility in the purchase decisions you make when buying an RV, come on. It never ceases to amaze me how excited newbies are when they buy their first RV. And then within oh, three, six months, they wish they would have done things very differently. Another example of hindsight being 2020. You know, the resources are there. The online reviews are there. I don't know what some people expect. If you were to go into a restaurant and buy a $200 bottle of wine and then regret it, whose fault is that? It's not the purchase price that's the uh, most important thing when buying a new RV. It's not. It's a combination of three things. It is the out-the-door price, the reviews and relationship with the dealer, and buying a quality brand of RV. All right, that's it. The out-the-door price, choosing the right dealer with a great reputation, and buying a, an RV that will last you for many, many years. It's like the old uh, three-legged stool analogy. You've heard of that one. You know, which of the three legs is the most important? Well, the answer is they're all the same. They are. Take any, any of the legs away. You ain't got much of a stool, do you? If you look at your RV purchase like the purchase of a three-legged stool where each of the legs is equally important, you'll be far better off than just focusing on a great price or fo focusing on buying a, a terrific brand that's got a great reputation. I know of some of the mega dealers that sell great brands of RVs, but they're out-the-door pricing. It may be great, but their service could be terrible. That's not good for a buyer. No matter what kind of price you get, you will most likely regret your decision. Now, it's not good for you, not good for uh, the RV industry either. If you like another example of what can happen when you buy from the wrong dealer, this call came in. The man asked that we not use his real name or voice. Hello, I purchased a brand new 2021 um, Keystone Hideout and I camped in it for four days and it started falling apart. Um, the heat wouldn't work and I was trying to get walk through on fixing that. Then I found a, a water heater leak and had to pull it back in after just getting it all set up and, and it's been there ever since. And so it's been there two weeks already and um, then I found out that the ceiling unit that they said we give me heat doesn't isn't even a heater at all and um the guy walking me through the camper when i picked it up um even showed me how how to get it to heat and it's not even a heater um it's just been a complete nightmare with with camping world um of course i, t I just told him i wanted my money back um and of course that's the, the manager said well this isn't walmart uh, is exactly his, his words to me. So anyway, Camping World, it's been a complete frustration, and they, they uh, have no customer service standards whatsoever, none. And I would, I, it's the worst consumer, um, uh, it's the, the worst uh, thing that I've ever been through as far as a consumer. So anyway, I appreciate your show. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, we hear a lot about Camping World horror stories, uh, but many other dealers, especially the great big ones, are doing the same thing. You need to remember the three-legged stool analogy. A great quality brand of RV, a really good out-the-door price, and a dealer with excellent reviews. If you don't have all three, walk away. That's my advice. I'd love to hear what you think. Call our 24-hour voicemail and sound off at one three three zero wingman That's one three three zero. 9464626 and a very special wingman shout out to those who are listening to our newest affiliate up in Massachusetts right there on uh, I91 in Northampton Springfield and Amherst listening to WHMP on both their AM and FM dials we're very glad to be a part of your program family if you're catching us on WHMP you know what give us a call let us know what you think of the show we've got a few prizes to send out and uh We'd love to hear from you. Again, our phone number is 1-330-WINGMAN, 1-330-WINGMAN. Now, still to come, part one of RV Myths and Legends with our correspondents from California, Tony and Peggy Barthel. And uh, yes, when it comes to RVs and RVing, there are a lot of RV myths and legends. And for you who dream about what it would be like to sell everything and go and live full-time in an RV, our good friends Mark and Julie Bennett from RV Love will share their story of how and why they made the decision more than six years ago to live on the road. I always find it very interesting to learn about somebody's why. 
Hopefully Mark and Julie will help you discover your why. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. More to come right after this. <laughs> 